When one thinks where the top airsoft replicas are manufactured, only two countries come to mind. And whether you like it or not, Japan and Taiwan have been and will always probably be the top dogs. We're almost always satisfied with their products, but us airsofters are greedy and often hunger for more authenticity. Wouldn't it be cool if the real steel firearm and the airsoft replica were designed and made in the same country under similar conditions? Imagine if an airsoft version of that pistol was made in that country. Like crowds at a Black Friday sale, people would go ballistic. Though it'll be more likely for you to win the lottery twice before that would ever happen. You may be wondering where I'm going with this. Well, I'm going to try to break this down as simply as I can. Let's use the Kalashnikov as an example, a Russian-made masterpiece with many variants. China opened up a factory and decided to make a variant of their own, the Type 56. This is where the airsoft companies come in. Real Sword used external components from real steel factories, but was made specifically for airsoft and then fit their own internals. ENL did the exact same thing, but they went one step further and got factories to make both externals and internals all in-house. This is the reason as to why Real Sword and ENL replicas looked so realistic, because they were in a way. The unfortunate thing is, both Real Sword and ENL have somewhat dwindled off into the abyss, leaving AK aficionados hungry for more, knowing that, and I'm sorry for saying this, and as amazing as they are, maybe even LCT isn't realistic enough. This is where NPO AEG stepped in. I say stepped in because they actually formed half a decade ago. They are a company in a secret location in a rural town called Magnitogorsk within the large expanse of Mother Russia that have made a very, very realistic looking VSS Venturas AEG. Now, will this be enough to please the previously mentioned aficionados? Did I just put the VSS on a very high pedestal? Does it even deserve to be up there? I guess we'll find out. The first thing I notice when I take it out of this box is how raw it looks. The issue with most airsoft manufacturers these days is that they're so used to having their guns so brand spanking new, not realizing that real guns are a little more grittier. As you take a closer look at the wood, you can tell that it's varnished. It's not smooth, it's got texture behind it. Towards the back, you have that really nice rubberized butt pad. They, and when I say they, I mean NPO, say that it is full steel. But when they say full steel, everything that's metallic is actually steel. So everything in and on the receiver, as well as the integral suppressor, is made out of steel. If you take a closer look at it as well, you'll notice all the little imperfections. There are bumps and bruises everywhere, giving the VSS personality. Then you have the 75 round plastic magazine and handguard. If you don't remember this, I've reviewed the VSS Venturas twice before. King Arms made one three years back and G&G &G released their GSS a year after. If you'd like to watch these reviews, click on the cards right up here. I don't expect the way this functions to be any different from those two. Yes, the magazine release is still right behind the magazine. The safety lever still on the right side. The fire selector still right behind the trigger. The scope mount can be found on the left side and if you pull back the mock charging handle, the hop-up adjustment dial is still right there in the breech. It's still really that simple. Sure, this is the best looking VSS out there, but what if I want something different, something more tactical? Please welcome the VSSM. This is the modern variant to the VSS. There are a few noticeable differences, as you can plainly see. There is now a railed silencer clamp for any additional accessories. There's also a rail on top of a dust cover for different kinds of scopes. And there is now a skeletal stock made out of plastic, metal, and wood. It's a really simple design. You can raise the cheek rest and adjust the butt stock to different lengths. That is, if the knobs weren't as tight as the butthole of the prisoner inside the prison cell showers, one thing that has changed though is the placement of the hop-up adjustment lever. It is now rather difficult to reach as you'll have to remove the handguard. But first you'll have to remove the suppressor, then the handguard and adjust it from there. The suppressor is also the housing for a battery with Dean's connectors. 
Adjusting the hob doesn't bother me, since I'll be adjusting it till it's perfect before I put everything back on anyway. Maybe, just maybe, you don't want to run a DMR slash assault rifle. Maybe you want to run an assault rifle slash PTW. Instead, or in that case, you can go for the valve. Everything looks and functions pretty much the same as the VSS, except now that it comes with a 120 round mid cap magazine that also fits on the VSS. There is also a plastic grip that is not attached to the folding stock here with another lever here to let it go and a sling point on the right side. There's something really cool about these three and I'm going to let Gambit explain that in a separate video. But you can find that video by clicking on the card right here or in the link in the description. Moving on. I think we're pretty much done with these triplets. So I guess that means it's time to chrono the thing. For the chrono test, we're using 0.2 gram 6 millimeter BBs. It clocked in at an average of just under 380 FPS. Do you guys remember this 20 meter range? I do. It most definitely brings back memories. So, like I said, we're 20 meters away from the target. We're going to be using 0.3 gram BBs. Let's give this a go. Trigger is nothing special, it's like every other AEG trigger out there. There is a slight reset though, which is a nice touch. Let's take a look at those results. <laughs> Holy macaroni, Quake Man, that's exactly what you get for hitting me in the face with the 9A91 so many times. Really unfair quake. But as you can see here, the grouping is really decent. A little less than two inches apart. So if you're looking for a great out of the box DMR slash assault rifle, I think you know exactly what to do. All three are very much the same internally. So you can expect the other two to be just as accurate and chrono the exact same as well. What it all comes down to is the style you prefer. Are you the type to live in a cabin in the woods, overlooking a lake, mahogany furniture, back to basics, keeping it real. Would you prefer a modern high-rise building with modern decor where pipes are visibly hanging from the ceiling? Or would you like a house in the suburbs with your own garden and a garage where your annoying cousin is staying and living in that space upstairs? You'd visit all of them, wishing you could afford all three and then travel back and forth depending on the season. But we're not all that lucky. You only have enough cash for one, so you have to choose where you'd spend your future. But fellow airsofters, let me know which one you would choose. The VSS, the VSSM, or the VAL, and why? And let me know in the comments section below. So for these three cool products and many more, go to our online store at www.redwolfairsoft.com and I'll be seeing you on the next episode of Red Wolf TV. Pornstache.